Good morning on this beautiful day in Boston. Tomorrow night we'll all be sitting by the Seder with our family and friends. We will be sitting together celebrating the most celebrated holiday for the Jewish people. A holiday steeped in tradition, steeped in rich tradition and customs that make us who we are. And before we start the Haggadah, right at the beginning we say, this is the bread of the afflicted. Whoever is hungry, come and eat. And the question of course is, I don't understand. If you want to invite someone to the Seder, why don't you invite them in Shul or a week before send out emails? Like we in the Shul did, we have a big Seder with nearly 150 people coming to celebrate the Seder. But we didn't wait till we're sitting at the Seder. So what's the point to tell people this is the bread of the poor, whoever's hungry, come and eat? And the answer the rabbis give, one of the many answers, is that the message is actually to those already by the Seder. You sit down by the Seder, and we all feel poor when it comes to our spirituality, when it comes to our connection to our Judaism, to our family, to our heritage, to our tradition. And therefore, the one who leads the Seder looks at the others, and urges them and says, Kol Irrelevant of your level of observance, of your engagement in your Judaism, of your knowledge of tradition. The fact that you are here sitting by the Seder means that you are connected, that you feel that spirituality. And come join us. Let's travel together on a journey. Let's connect to our soul. Let's find the spirituality within us as we sit together by the Seder. What a powerful message as we sit down by the Seder. And then of course, we go on to the four sons. And we have the wise, the wicked. We have the simple. And we have the one that can't even open their, their mouth. They're afraid to ask anything. And in a certain sense, that's the story of the Jewish people. We're a dysfunctional family. This one loves his Judaism. This one can't stand it. This one knows nothing about it. This one doesn't know that he's Jewish. But at the end of the day, we're all still family. It's all part of one family. And the trick and the message of the four children is two. One is, what do we say? We say, Echad Chacham. One is wise. The Echad Rasha, one is wicked. The Echad Tam, and one is simple. The Echad Sheini Yedei Elisha, who doesn't know how to open his mouth. We don't say one, two, three, and four. We call each one the Echad. And the Rebbe, in one of his talks, says like this, and the reason why we call each one an Echad is because what we're saying is that if you dig deep down within each one and you find their Echad, Echad represents God. You find their godliness, you find their soul, you find their spirituality. You recognize that they are part of one. Sometimes you see someone at the surface and you say, oh, what's his connection, what's his relevance? But the truth is, you have to find the Echad. And when you see each one as number one, each one as the most important, and you see their one within them, then you have respect. Then you're able to love, then you're able to embrace, and then you're able to celebrate. We've seen what was going on the last month in Israel. Nearly a million people were demonstrating. 600,000 people came out to the streets and demonstrated. So many different opinions. But at the end of the day, we're one big family. My colleague and friend, Rabbi Cantor, who's a Chabad rabbi, in Bangkok, Thailand, just put up a video of 75 rabbinical students that came to Thailand to share the message of Passover and make Seders for 10,000 Israeli backpackers. Imagine, 10,000 Israeli backpackers just in Thailand will be at a Chabad Seder run by these 70 students that's besides Nepal and besides China and besides everywhere else. And if you think about it, many of these people who are backpacking and coming to the Seder, if they would have been in Israel now, they would be demonstrating. But yet, here they are sitting at the Seder, listening, eating the food of spirituality, connecting, singing the songs of tradition. Because when we're able to see beyond the surface, and we see Echad, we see that each one is a one, each one is part of God, each one is unique, then we're able to embrace, we're able to love, we're able to cherish. And that's the message, and that's what we have to come to the Seder with. You know, at the beginning of Corona, COVID, in March 9, 2020, 
We went into lockdown. And the first Seder, we had a lockdown. Many people were not able to leave this house. And there was this woman in Israel who had just lost her husband to COVID just a few weeks ago. And her kids couldn't be with her because it was under lockdown. You weren't allowed to be together for the Seder. And she was going to be alone. And her neighbor, she lived in like one of these porched apartments. And her neighbor from the apartment next door said, you know what? We're doing a say there. Why don't we open our windows? We'll sit on the porch next to the window and you'll be next to your window. And then we'll be able to celebrate together. You'll be able to be part of the say there. And she had no choice. She said, fine. Her daughter calls her after the Passover and calls this woman who was alone for the first time in 50 years. She was alone since she married for her husband that passed away. She was never alone. And here she is at the say there. And after on Chalamot, her daughter calls her and says, tell me, how was you say this? She says, you won't believe it. This family that invited me to celebrate with them on the porch and listen to their songs, they sang all the same songs that we sang. They did all the same customs. Everything was the same. But little did this woman know that it wasn't the same. But when this family realized that she was going to be alone, they called her children and they said, do me a favor, make us a recording of all the songs and all the traditions that you did at your Seder. Us and our children will practice it. And when we come to the Seder, we will sing those songs so your mother can feel familiar. And she won't feel alone being at the Seder for the first time without family. She'll feel like we are her family. That's the story of the Jewish people. Yes, we might be a dysfunctional family, but at the end of the day, we're a family. And all four of us, all kinds, come and sit down by the Seder. When we open our hearts and our minds and our souls and we say, Whoever's hungry, whoever's yearning for spirituality, for godliness, for family, for comfort, come and partake in this beautiful night. As I messaged yesterday, mentioned yesterday, if you know someone who doesn't have a Seder to be at yet, please let us know. We have a space for them at our Seder. Chag Sameach. See you tomorrow.